In this lesson, we're going to talk about forming compounds with Bohr models. So how do compounds form? Well, what happens is in our last lesson, we talked about valence electrons. And when compounds form, it's because two or more atoms, valence electrons, interact. And what happens because of that is a chemical bond will form. So why would it do that? Why would these atoms want to do that? Well, it's because when they do that, they, the atoms, are more stable when they, when the valence electrons interact. And they do this because of a process called noble gas stability. Now, how these noble gas stability works is that if you look at a periodic table, you would see that the noble gases, which are right here on a periodic table, have no charge. And they have no charge because they have a full valence shell. So what does that mean? It means the other elements, like the alkali metals and the alkali earth metals, halogens, and so forth, want to have a full outer shell. Because if they have a full outer shell, they become like noble gases, thus they become stable. So they will either exchange electrons, or they may even share electrons for this to occur. So we're going to first talk about ionic bonding. Ionic bonding, first of all, occurs between a metal and non-metal. And what happens here is that the metal will lose electrons to the non-metal. Now, let's do an example to show this. Let's look at, for example, sodium chloride. So we're going to, first of all, on the left side here, we're going to draw the Bohr model of sodium and the Bohr model of chlorine. So what's going to look like is we have sodium right here, and sodium has atomic number 11. So it has 11 electrons. So we're going to draw the first two right here. Then we have to draw the next eight like so. And then we're going to draw one more electron in that next shell. Well, chlorine looks like this. Chlorine has 17 electrons for atomic number 17. So it's going to look like this. Now, what you see here is that sodium has one electron in its outermost shell. So what can sodium do to get a full outer shell? Well, it could gain seven more electrons, or it could lose this one. Because if it loses this one, these L electrons right here, so these eight right here, will now become this valence shell. So which one would it prefer? Gain seven or lose one? It will want to lose one, because losing one is much easier than gaining seven. Well, let's look at chlorine. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. So what can it do? It can lose all seven of these, or it can gain one more. Which one's easier? Gaining one more. So what's going to happen is sodium's going to transfer this electron to chlorine. And when it does that, they each will become this. So you have sodium, and sodium's going to look like this now. While chlorine is going to look like this now. And what you're going to notice once I finish drawing them is that they have full valence shells because the maximum number of on the second shell right here is 8, sodium is 8. The maximum number in the third shell is 8 as well, and chlorine has 8. So now they have a full valence shell. But they are no longer neutral because sodium has 11 protons. 
because it has atomic number 11 that now has 10 electrons. So it becomes a bit more positive. To show that, we got to show that sodium becomes a bit more positive. So we put square brackets around it, and we put positive charge. Chlorine, on the other hand, gain electron. It becomes more negative. Thus, we show that again with square brackets with a negative symbol. So these ionic bonds are formed by electrostatic forces. You have a positive particle and a negative particle. They are electro electrostatically um, um, bonded. So let's look at our next example. Let's look at calcium fluoride. Calcium has a Bohr model that looks like this. Calcium has, as you see here, 20 electrons. So we're going to draw the Bohr model of calcium. 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Fluorine has 9 electrons. So again, look at here, 9 electrons because it's atomic number 9. So it will look like this. 2 right here and 7 in its second shell. So what you're going to notice is this. Calcium wants to get rid of these two electrons. Fluorine has room for one more. So what happens is calcium goes, hey, you could take one of these electrons. And now fluorine's happy, but what do we know about calcium? Calcium still has another electron here. So what does it want to do? It wants to get rid of this, but who could take it? Well, if these two were in a mixture together, calcium and fluorine, there will be other fluorine uh, atoms around. So another fluorine could take this other electron, and thus you need two fluorines to bond with one calcium. So that's our next drawing. So that's why over here you see we're going to draw calcium looking like this, and we're going to have to draw two fluorines to be able to meet our bond to form our ionic compound. So that's calcium, and then this is fluorine. And there's going to be two of them now. Now, for this to occur, we, what, what we need is that calcium lost two electrons, so it becomes positive two. While each fluorine gain an electron, it becomes negative. As you tell, you can see here, it's still neutral. This compound is still neutral. Positive two, and we have two minus charges. This is still neutral. So these are what we call ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are between metals and nonmetals. What happens if we now deal with two nonmetals, which we call covalent bonds? Covalent bonds, though, are always Again, between two nonmetals. And instead of electrons transferring, electrons will share. And these sharing electrons forms physical bonds. And these physical bonds are what we call bonding pairs because you need two electrons all right you need two electrons to form a bond one bond so what does that look like if we draw for h2o well, let's take a look here is what we're going to do is draw up the Bohr model of h2o so i'm going to draw hydrogen hydrogen Bohr model is simple it's one electron there's two of them. Oxygen is a, little, is a bit more complicated. There is eight electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what's going to happen? Well, these hydrogens can, in a sense, give this electron away. Or I could take another one. It can do that. But instead, it's got a formal covalent bond. What's going to happen is a physical bond is going to combine between these electrons, like so. They're going to physically bond. And when they do that, you're going to get this compound. 
you're going to get oxygen actually in the middle. And oxygen's got to look like this. You're going to have two electrons in the first shell still, two electrons in the first shell, and then you have eight in the second shell because it took two sharing of electrons with the hydrogen. Now, hydrogen, on the other hand, is going to gain those two electrons as well, and it's going to look like this. So notice that they're now sharing those two bonding electrons. They're sharing these two electrons. This is different from the full transferring electrons, hence why covalent bonds are physically having bonding electrons, two electrons to bond it. If we look at, for example, CH4, let's do another example, we're going to see that carbon, C, has six electrons. So we're going to see one, two, three, four, five, six. So what's going to happen is it needs four more electrons to make a full outer shell. So it's going to have four hydrogens show up. There's one hydrogen. There's another hydrogen. There's another hydrogen. And last one is there's another hydrogen. And what they're going to do is they're going to form four bonds between this hydrogen and this electron, this electron, this electron, and this electron. So what's going to look like is it's going to look like this. You have calcium in the middle with its two electrons in its outermost shell. And then you're going to get the hydrogen surrounding it. Two electrons, they have the eight electrons around on the outermost shell now because it wants a full valence shell. But you're going to have now hydrogen on the outside, like so. So that's the difference between covalent bonds and ionic bonds. They are how the electrons are either transferred or shared. As always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.